My question today regarding the story of Korach and his rebellion is uh, on your knowledge of Psalms. How many people can tell of hand where the rebellion of Datan and Aviram at the very least is hinted in the Psalms? In the book of Psalms there is a mention of Datan and Aviram Korach is not mentioned, interestingly, and one possibility that Rashi offers is perhaps because the authors of many of the Psalms were Bnei Korach. Of course, the Torah says that Bnei Korach did not die in this rebellion, and they were very great people, and uh, many of the Psalms were authorized by descendants of Korach, so possibly because of that, this Psalm does not mention out of the honor of the children of Korach, this psalm does not mention Korach uh, as part of that rebellion, but it does mention Datar and Aviram. And this is a very interesting psalm, uh, 106. We don't know when it was written, we don't know by whom it was written. Very unusual. Most of the psalms have a kind of title. Either it's Laminatseach, uh, Mizmorli David, a lot of times it also says... Um, some circumstance when it was written, when David, for instance, escaped from his uh, uh, from uh, his son during the rebellion, or when David was hiding in a cave, or whatever the case may be. And some of the psalms start with uh, that it's a psalm of Nekorach or some other author. And here it just starts with Hallelujah, Hodula Hashem Kitov Kilalam Chazdo. A very common start, by the way. The 107th psalm also starts the same way. Uh, and uh, the previous psalm uh, started somewhat similar, Hodula Hashem Kiruvishmo. It's, by the way, the, the previous psalm, Psalm 106, uh, is a psalm that has a, a large part of it is parallel to the piece of Divri Ayamim that we recite every morning. The 105th psalm and, 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 and 104th psalm and 103rd psalm start with Barchin um, So, So it seems like the collection of psalms here at the end of the fourth book. You know, the book of Psalms is also divided into five books. It's not as clear a division as by uh, the, bo the books of Torah. The five books of Torah are clearly divided. Uh, the books of Psalms are divided, you might say, somewhat artificially, but it's true that every time there is a, an end of, the, of, of a certain book, as, as this Psalm is the end of the fourth book, there is some kind of a conclusive Psalm that says Amen uh, at the end of some sort. Uh, so, Amen is usually a conclusion of, uh, just like with the blessings, it concludes, uh, for example, for Sephardim, where they pronounce a few blessings in a row, they say Amen even on their own blessing. So, so this particular psalm ends with, Baruch Hashem Elokei Yisrael, Min Olam Ve'ad Olam, Ve'amar Kol Ha'am, Amen Haliluka. But uh, the other books of psalms also end with something quite similar. Baruch Hashem Le'alam, Amen Ve'amen, or something of that nature. So, so this psalm is the last psalm of the of the fourth of the five parts of psalms, of the five books of psalms, and like I said, a number of psalms before it also don't have a specific title and seem to talk about general things. The Barhinavshi psalms generally talk about, uh, one of the Barhinavshi psalms we pronounce in Rosh Chodesh, they talk about, uh, usually, uh, the psalmist is excited about how Hashem created the world, so, such a wonderful world, and describes different things, different phenomena, what, go, what goes on. Uh, one psalm, uh, uh, by the way, <laughs> that psalm is the beginning of the next book, uh, also starts uh, uh, with Hodula Hashem Kitov Kilalam Chazdo, and that psalm, the Hasidim say before Shabbat, also doesn't have any title, and that one talks about the various types of people who should thank Hashem after they were saved. From certain troubles, that's where the, our sages say that four types of people have to thank Hashem. Uh, those who crossed the sea, those who crossed the desert, those who were sick and uh, got better, and those who were in, in, uh, imprisoned and got out. Uh, so, what's the 106th Psalm in particular? The theme, the theme of this Psalm primarily is uh, the recitation of the various things that happened to us, and how we did a lot of bad things throughout our history, and Hashem always uh, saved us, uh, although sometimes punished us. And in the end, it fi finishes with the hope that uh, Hashem will hopefully redeem us. Hosheinu Hashem lekeinu v'kapzenu minagoyim. Save us, Hashem. Gather us from the nations, etc. 
so that we should thank you and, and, and uh, praise you. So one of the verses in this psalm, by the way, the order of the various sins of our nation in the desert is not in chronological order here. There is discussion in the commentators what the order is. But one of the, the, the verses here actually has to do with, with our topic. It definitely seems to be pointing to, as Ebenezer and many other commentators point out, seems to be pointing to the episode of Korah. After describing how Hashem saved us at the sea and how he uh, gave us food in the desert, it says, Vayikanuli Moshe Bamachane, they were jealous of Moshe in the camp, Bamachane. This is going to be important, why it says specifically in the camp. We'll get to this, back to this in a moment. Leaharon Kedosh Hashem, and to Aharon, who is the Holy One of Hashem, Hashem's Holy One. And then it says that the, the, the uh, earth uh, opened its, uh, its mouth and uh, uh, swallowed Datan and uh, covered the company of Aviram. So clearly it seems to be talking about our Parsha. Whatever wrong things our nation did in the Parsha Korah. So there are a few questions about this verse. Veikanuli Moshe b'machane le'aron kidosh Hashem. What is this b'machane? What specifically is it talking about? And what extra information can we learn from it compared to what we know from Parshat Korach? So I saw a few, a few interesting interpretations that I want to share with you. These are the things I learned myself also relatively recently. This is not something that everybody knows. Or, you know, it's like an obvious thing, right? For instance, everybody, almost every Orthodox Jew knows what Rashi says in the beginning of this parsha, how he quotes Midrash Tanhuma. But here there is uh, some Hiddush. Uh, the Psalms are generally studied less, of course. We all study Humash all the time. The Psalms, a lot of people recite Psalms, but few people study Psalms, especially with the commentaries that I'll mention in a moment. So the first commentary I want to mention is Malbim. He relates, actually, uh, the first half of the uh, 16th verse to when Moshe chose the 70 elders in the previous parsha, in the end of parsha, uh, two, two parshas ago, actually, in the end of uh, parsha Beha we find that uh, Moshe uh, gave certain powers and certain prophetic spirit to 70 elders. So Malbim says that the 250 people that gathered with Korach uh, were jealous of that. They wanted to be the elders, the leaders, and Moshe chose other leaders, Bamachane. It says that specifically this type of expression, in the camp. So Moshe chose 70 leaders, and these 250 leaders thought they, they better deserve it. So that's what it's hinting to. And Le'aharon Kadosh, Kadosh Hashem, that one, says Malbim, is talking about Korach specifically. Korach was envious of, of Aaron. He wanted the position of Aaron. That a lot of commentators say. So... Basically, the two halves of Psalms of this, of this verse, according to Malbim, hint to two types of people, Korach and his company. Korach wanted uh, the position of Aaron, and the 250 people, according to Malbim, wanted the position of these uh, 70 elders. Now, the Vilna Gaon is quoted in one of these editions where they have the Likutim, various things. In, uh, there is no specific commentary of Vilna Gaon to the entire book of Psalms, but there are Likutim, what they call, meaning that they take from different things, from different sources, and put it together. I have a, a four-volume, uh, huge commentary of the Vilna Gaon and his students, and there I found to this verse a very interesting thing that they quote in the name of Vilna Gaon that he told his friend Magid of Dubno. There was a very well-known Magid, a person, a Magid that was somewhat different position than a rabbi. Uh, Magid was uh, more similar to the pulpit rabbis we have today, actually. A lot of the pulpit rabbis in certain types of synagogues are very similar to Magidim in those times. Magid usually did not uh, decide Torah laws. Uh, he was not a judge. He wasn't necessarily a great specialist in halacha, although Magid of Dubna was very knowledgeable in all areas of Torah. But Magid was good at uh, saying mashalim, various types of proverbs and uh, basically, Musar, what, what would later be called Musar, the, book, the, 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 the movement of Musar did not yet exist in the times of Vilna Gaon. It happened like a, a generation or two, probably even more, uh, maybe 100 years later. If we start from the times of Ravi Sosalantar, that would be 100 years after Vilna Gaon or so. But uh, books of Musar, of course, always existed. Uh, Rabbi Chaim, Moshe Chaim Lutzato, whom the Vilna Gaon respected very much, the Ramchal, wrote a book of Musar, Mesilati Sharim, and of course, uh, the uh, 
the book of Musar uh, that Rabbi Yona wrote was hundreds of years before he was Rishon, and uh, Rabbi Bach Ibn Pakuda is even earlier, Chovat Alivavot, and in general, the book of Mishlei, the Proverbs of Shlomo, can also be considered the, the greatest book of Musar, and that's a biblical word. Uh, in the book of Dvarim, there is a lot of Musar. So, uh, so we could say that the Magidim were the Musar masters, even though the movement of Musar didn't exist yet, but they were the ethical masters who usually went from city to city and gave various types of uh, proverbs and uh, story, told stories, and Magid of Dubna was very good at that. So this commentary to Psalms, as I said, to Tehillim, uh, mentions that the Gra told the, the Magid of Dubna the following explanation, that he says, uh, no matter what you do, people will always find what to be unhappy about, what, how to criticize you. And he thinks that this, uh, this particular verse hints to two different ways Moshe and Aaron behaved, almost the opposite ways, and both uh, the people were able to criticize. And that is, he says, Moshe b'machane, that uh, they were uh, jealous of Moshe, the fact that he was not together with them in Machane, in the camp. Right? It says in the Torah, in the Pashat uh, Kitisa, that Moshe would take his, his, his uh, ohel uh, outside of the camp. So he seemed to be separated from everybody. So they would criticize Moshe, why are you so separate? Why aren't you together with the people? Why aren't you in with us? But Aaron, exactly the opposite. Aaron was together with the people. He always tried to help the people. He was uh, known to be a person who uh, looks for peace, to uh, make uh, anybody who is... Uh, uh, argued with somebody else to make them uh, uh, love each other, to, to make peace between them. Rodef Shalom, they call it, right? We know from Pirkei Avot, right, what they say about Aaron. So Aaron was together with the people, but he, they criticized Davka Aaron for the opposite. They said, this person should be holy, he shouldn't be together with the people. So the Gra concludes, no matter what you do, uh, they'll be unhappy. If you're with the people, they say, why are you with the people and not separately holy? If, you're with, with, if you are separate, then they say you're not mixing enough with the people. But what's interesting is I saw almost the opposite explanation uh, mentioned in the book Ateret Amikra by, um, uh, in the name of uh, Rav Naftali Tzvi of Ropshitz. This was one of Hasidic masters. By the way, he was born exactly when Baal Shem Tov died. You could imagine it's a very special thing to be born when a different rabbi dies, especially since Hazal say that whenever a great rabbi dies, a different rabbi is born on that day. They, they bring a few, few examples of this, like when, for instance, uh, Rabbi Kiva died, Rabbi was born, when Rabbi died, Rabbi, Yehu, Rabbi, Rabbi Yehuda was born, then Rava, then Rabashi. There, there, there is a Gemara in Kiddushan, I think on 72nd page, that, that brings this. So you could imagine how people were so surprised when a certain Hasidic leader Turned out, I mean, when he was born, nobody probably knew much about uh, that he would become once a leader. But once he became a leader, and it turns out that he was born on the day Baal Shem Tov died. Baal Shem Tov, by the way, died just like David Amelech on Shavuot. So surprise, surprise, there was a new leader that was born on that very day. Rav Naftar Itzvi of Ropshitz. So this book, Atereta Amikra, brings in his name the following explanation of the first. But by the way, I think it's a very Hasidic specific explanation. Most of the time, the differences between Hasidic teachings and non-Hasidic teachers, teachings are not uh, very uh, clear. Anything that Baal Shem Tov said could be said by Vilna Gaon as well, except a few specific things that are very Hasidic. So this teaching, I think, is a very Hasidic teaching. And that is, he says that both Moshe and Aaron were criticized Davka because there were too much with the people. The opposite of how the Gra understands the first half of the verse. And that is, he says, they envied Moshe Bamachane, meaning what is he doing in the camp? Why isn't he separated? And the Aaron Kedosh Hashem, again, to Aaron, they were uh, upset about Aaron, saying, why is he mixing with the people? He's a, a holy person, he's not supposed to be with the people. So, concludes, Rav Naftali Tzvi or Rav Shaz, that it's the same as today, meaning his time. Of course, that was one of the criticisms against Hasidim, that Hasidim, their way was to elevate generally uh, the people. They were always with the people, much more. It was a, it was a very uh, popular movement at some point. In some places, practically the entire areas became Hasidic. And uh, the idea was that, uh, as opposed to the, those op opposed to Hasidut who 
were called at that time Isnagdim, they generally uh, perceived a Talmud Chacham, a sage, who is always learning far from the people, trying to separate from everybody. But uh, according to Rav Naftali Svi of uh, Ropshitz, it's uh, the criticism here was Davka uh, because the leaders, Aaron and Moshe, were too close to the people. And he says that's exactly how they criticize us today <laughs> in his time. And on this, I'm going to end. If you like this video, please press like.